Look, I don't know how I'm going to come off in this review. I, quite frankly, I can't really guarantee anything. All I know is that Raw's been off the air for like, I think, three, four hours at this point. I, I, it just doesn't matter. I've got a headache. I don't really care. This show sucked. Like, the, the, the thing is with Raw this week, like, for weeks now, Raw's been okay. You know, Raw hasn't been the worst. But the fact of the matter is, this show... Oh, my God. Like, there are a number of moments in this show, like, several moments, where I'm sitting there on my couch watching it, and I have the thought process of wrestling's passed me by. Like, this isn't for me, you know? Like, this was a show that was so bad that it made me just not want to watch wrestling. I, I, I kid you not. And I'll address this now before I get the, oh, if you don't like it, don't watch comments. I watch wrestling mainly at this point for this channel and because I have a general passion for the, the business of wrestling because shows like this are not why I or not why anyone watches wrestling. Shows like this are just... Okay, I'll, I'll start it off with... Where do you begin with a show like this, dude? Where do you begin? Because this show... The, the thing with Raw, usually Raw is consistently mediocre for three hours. There's maybe a segment or two that are pretty like... Oh, God. Like, that's really bad. But that's only like one segment, maybe two. This show had upwards of four, four to six. Like, upwards of four or six segments that literally made you go... What happened in the creative meeting to, you know, come up with this? What happened backstage out in the hours leading up to this show and during like the show that made this be the end product of Monday Night Raw? What was responsible for this being the end product? And let's look no further than the, I mean, the Shane McMahon expose of Braun Strowman. Let's start with that. I think that's a pretty good starting point to go on. Shane McMahon's expose of Braun Strowman. Now, when they showed the graphic for this, I was thinking... Oh, dear God. I mean, considering where this storyline's been, where the whole storyline is that Shane McMahon is the brain and Vince is the... Vince, and... I can't be... Bo this show's broken me. And Braun is the brawn, quite literally. They're doing brains versus brawn. Shane's gonna come out there and say that Braun Strowman's stupid, and then Braun's gonna be like, Choo-choo! <sighs> I get that's what they're doing. But this segment... <sighs> I'm watching Shane McMahon, a 51-year-old, multi-millionaire, son of Vince McMahon, someone who has, he's, he's rich out the wazoo, he's standing next to Jackson Riker, someone who all he's known for is being cancelled back in May for Donald Trump comments, and then Elias, who should be at least, he, Elias should be the United States champion. He should be in a meaningful storyline. Instead, he's standing next to Shane, as Shane has Braun Strowman's apparently his fifth grade report card, which, th th this was, I get if you want to do this kind of segment, I get it, you want to try and make Braun seem stupid, I guess that's the storyline, but can you make this any more cringe? Like, literally, the st they have a whole report card done up, and there's like a stamp in the corner saying, needs improvement, with like a big exclamation mark. You've got this, you know, these comments uh, saying, Braun needs to go to, you know, extra summertime classes. Braun is distracting his peers in class. Braun's gym grade is a D plus. And then you have El Elias or Jackson Riker, whichever, it doesn't bloody matter. One of them's like, oh, well, I don't know where the plus came from. <laughs> Who is this for? Like, uh, do, do kids find this funny nowadays? A am I, a am I just missing the boat here? Like, is there an audience for this? Who, who finds this funny? Like, I get, humour is subjective. Duh. But a segment like this, and segments all across this show, who are they for? Okay, who are they for? Because the fact of the matter is, there, there aren't people going up these days who are actively enjoying and actively loving this stuff. Uh, y yes, you'll see people on wrestling Twitter say that this is some magical long-term storyline because... Five years ago, here's a picture of Shane McMahon and Braun Strowman standing outside of some locker room taking a picture together. People are going to say it's some great long-term storyline. But the fact of the matter is, these segments on Raw, we're seeing Braun Strowman coming out there being like, Shane, I don't like you. And then Shane's just... That segment legitimately nearly broke me. And then the segment after that, 
was literally The Miz and John Morrison presenting their hey, hey, ho, ho, or sorry, hey, hey, hop, hop, my, my mistake, sorry, hey, hey, hop, hop music video. Now, hey, hey, hop, hop, okay, they're feuding with Bad Bunny, right, so WWE take the hey, hey, ho, ho thing that everyone loved back in, like, last June, and they have to rehash that, and this time, it's two 40-year-old men, one of which has a reality show, he's been a two-time WWE champion, literally three weeks ago, he was the WWE champion, and his tag team partner is John Morrison, someone who legitimately looks like he's a failed TikTok star, but in reality, he's had like a 15-year wrestling career. These two guys are in bunny costumes, bouncing up and down. Can you imagine the filming for this music video? Like, I'm watching this video, and I'm thinking to myself, the song itself isn't even that horrible. But what I hate about it, I, I don't use the word hate much, but like, genuinely, I'm watching this, and we're seeing Mike Mazanin and whatever John Morrison's real name, it doesn't body matter. They're literally, they're standing on the stage. It's an empty arena. They're in bunny costumes. They're jumping around in a 360 degree motion. And I'm just like, why? Okay, just why? So then we cut back to the ring, like a minute into the music video. And Miz and Morrison clearly had instruction by Bruce Pritchard or Kevin Dunn or Vince or whoever made this, you know, gosh darn script of, for this show, they clearly had instructions to dance to the music. So they're, they're, they're busting a move to this, just this hey, hey, hop, hop song. On the time tron, we're seeing Miz and Morrison in bunny costumes. And in the ring, we're seeing Jomo and the Maz getting it on as though it's 2 a.m. in the nightclub after they've had 15 standard drinks. They're just, they're just getting, getting it on to this music. And I, I'm literally, I had this genuine moment where I'm thinking to myself, wrestling's not for me. Wrestling is, uh, th this isn't for me. Because the fact of the matter is, WWE just signed a five-year deal with Peacock. You know what that means? We're going to get countless, countless Raws and segments just like this one. If you think Raw was bad in 2018, 2019, and 2020, you wait till you see Raw in the Peacock era. Because if this show was anything to go by, oh boy. Oh boy, Raw and the Peacock era. Are oh, you? Oh boy. I, if I'm the USA Network, I'm 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 saying where's the TV deal? We're, we're cutting that. You can you can piss off to Peacock and air these shows on there because this this ain't it, Chief. This ain't it. So we get this Miz Morrison hey hey hop hop segment. Then we get Damian Priest and Bad Bunny coming out there. Cool. Bad Bunny cuts a promo on the Miz. And literally says something to the effect of, I'm going to break your effing face because I'm a family-friendly channel. I'm going to say effing, yeah, I know, cringe, etc. Then Damien Priest, literally, you can tell Damien Priest makes his face like, dude, you, you, you can't say that. And then Priest goes, oh, you're, you're, you're blah, blah, blah. I, I've tuned out of this segment. I watched this back on YouTube. I Watching Miz and Morrison busting a move in the ring to hey, hey, hop, hop as the music video is playing and they're hopping around in bunny costumes. Just, yeah. So, we've had Shane in his expose of Braun Strowman. We've had Miz and Morrison, hey, hey, hop, hopping. And then what? Elitist, that's only two bad segments. Why do you hate this show so much? Why are you doing a full-blown rant about this episode of Raw? Where, there's, there's so much more I haven't even covered. I mean, where do you begin? I guess I'll go to the Hurt Business. The Hurt Business is my favorite thing in WWE outside of Roman Reigns and The Fiend. And also, real quick shout out, Bray Wyatt, you are a, a gem of a man, I swear to God. Bray Wyatt, I posted this in my community tab on Twitter. The fact that he actually liked you know, the tweet of my video about let me in, the transformation of Bray Wyatt, that's amazing. Like, Bray Wyatt hardly ever likes tweets, and he went out of his way to like that. Like, that genuinely was insane. But nonetheless, the Hurt Business, I made the video back in December saying the Hurt Business is awesome. I've stuck by that sentiment ever since, because the fact of the matter is, they were one of the best things about WWE in 2020, they were one of the best things about WWE in the first two and a half months of 2021, but at the end of the day, WWE, Vince McMahon, they've said to themselves, oh, well, at WrestleMania, Lashley, if he's with the Hurt Business, is going to get cheered versus Drew McIntyre, we want Drew McIntyre to get cheered, so we're going to break up the Hurt Business. Because that's the best way of doing it. We're going to break up the Hurt Business. And at the end of the show, they revealed that Baron Corbin is 
the the the, the key you know perpetrator of this i guess i guess perpetrator well. i don't even care at this point perpetrator schmerpetite i don't give a damn so baron corbin beats up drew mcintyre and the last seven minutes of the show is literally Baron Corbin punching Drew McIntyre as Lashley's death staring Drew, and the final shot of the show is just Lashley standing over Drew. So we get this magical long term storytelling because back in 2018, when Raw was at its all time worst on November 26th and December 3rd, and the show was literally an hour of this Lashley, Corbin, and McIntyre stable, because this stable happened back then, two and a half years ago, now when they do this to close Raw, according to people on Wrestling Twitter, this is some magical piece of long term storytelling. Okay, I'm sure it is. So. That's what we get there. Baron Corbin, for no explained reason, just jumps ship from SmackDown and was all of a sudden in the main event storyline of Raw. You love to see it. So that was fantastic. The herd business is now broken up. We literally got a segment to start the show where Lashley beat up Sheldon Benjamin and yelled at Cedric Alexander. And MVP was like barking at them as well. So quite literally, the herd business is now broken up. That's just what Raw needs. Because you take Raw, which already wasn't in a good state, with the Hurt Business you know, as a cool stable. Raw wasn't great as is, so what do you do? You say, stuff the Hurt Business, Cedric Alexander, Sheldon Benjamin, piss off back to WWE main event. We want Baron Corbin versus, or not versus, we want Baron Corbin and Lashley teaming up to beat up Drew McIntyre every week. So when Drew McIntyre wins the title at WrestleMania, he can get cheered. Because if they didn't do this, he would have been booed. I get the thinking, I get why they did it, but the fact of the matter is, you're literally, you're, 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 you're cutting off your nose to spite your face. That's what you're doing. You're, you're getting rid of the coat business, something that was legitimately so awesome, and one of the best things in wrestling the past few years, you're saying, stuff you to them, get rid of that group. That group can just go, you know, die away. We're going to have Lashley and Baron Corbin. And when McIntyre beats Lashley at WrestleMania, we, we, we'll get the privilege of seeing McIntyre running through random heels for another eight months. Like, I, I genuinely like McIntyre. He's one of the best things in the company right now. But is that really the way to go? Breaking up the Hurt Business, just so at WrestleMania, you don't get the WrestleMania 22 incident again, where Cena, the babyface, went in and you know, the know-it-all crowd cheered Triple H because Cena's stale. I just, bruh. So that was that. That's not even to mention the New Day doing charades on games night with AJ Styles and Almas. Because that's something we needed to see. We needed to see the New Day with Xavier Woods drawing a rocket ship on a piece of paper and Kofi Kingston yelling, uh, 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 Rocket House! Rocket Doodle! Rocket! Uh, the rocket ship and then Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston are jumping around like they've just won their third Super Bowl and you've got AJ Styles there this is the great AJ Styles this is someone who I've seen many people say is the, one, the, the greatest wrestler of the 21st century this is the AJ Styles and he's standing in the ring forced to act legitimately distraught because in this game of charades or whatever on games night with the New Day Kofi Kingston successfully guessed rocket ship, therefore, therefore Styles is legitimately distraught. This is someone who should be, I don't even know, should Styles be WWE champion? Not right now, but this is the best you've got for him. He's standing there, literally, I'm not even like the biggest Styles fan, but the fact of the matter is, he's involved in this, and WWE are doing this? Like, I, you know, like, if you're going to do a segment like this, I only have one of these on the show. But the fact of the matter is, you have Games Night with the New Day, where they're playing charades, and H and, and, and Omos doesn't know what the sun is, apparently. Because that's what, because that's comedy, pal. Because AJ Styles drew a sun, and Omos was like, uh, and then that was legit it. Why? Bruce. My, my old buddy, Bruce. Creighton. I just... So you have the New Day Games Night. You've got The Miz and Morrison, hey, hey, hop, hop. You've got Shane McMahon's expose of Braun Strowman. You've got the Hurt Business, one of the best acts in the company, being rushed in a breakup for no reason. Well, I get, I get the reason, but it's just... I hate it, dude. So the Hurt Business break up. And what else? Oh, yeah, Matt Riddle, everyone's favorite on Twitter, Matt Riddle... I mean, he had a match with Sheamus, who cares? 
later in the show, he's on, a, he's on his scooter backstage. Okay, who really cares? And literally, he has a segment with Asuka backstage. And Asuka, she's doing her damn just to make this entertaining. She's like, you know, genuinely in, to trying to make this segment good. Riddle literally in the middle of the segment says, like, like legitimately, I forgot my line. See ya. And he just leaves. I'm sorry, what? You're being paid by WWE, by Vince McMahon. You're being given this opportunity and you legitimately forgot the line. Okay, add with it. Think of something. You're Matt Riddle. You can legit go, oh, well, bro, I, I, I like Japan, bro. Like, he could have said anything. It's Riddle. But instead he goes, oh, I forgot my line. Oh, oh bye, bro. And he, and he just leaves. And As poor Oscar's left there thinking, okay. And she just like smiles and... Yeah, you know, walks like what? Uh huh. Like just this show was a this show was a mess. It was a hot mess. And then that's not even to mention the, the Ray Ripley and Oscar contract signing. This whole thing, like, uh, Ray Ripley is saying, like, I'm I'm watching the segment. I'm just like, this is just this isn't it. These these two, Oscar is amazing charisma wise, but I'm watching her in an empty Thunderdome screaming, and Adam Pearce is just standing there, just like, oh, and then Rhea Ripley is just making no exp no facial expression, and then Rhea Ripley, like, ugh, dude, this show broke me, and then Rhea Ripley literally grabs the table and s literally throws it at Asuka's face, legitimately clubs her in the face, like, Asuka didn't get her hands up in time to protect, so literally, it legitimately hit her in the jaw, and you can tell she was genuinely hurt by that, it was, that was great, and then Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler, and Reginald walk out there, because everyone needs to see Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler, and Reginald. And then Nia Jax is like, just saying that Rhea Ripley and them should have a tag match next week. And okay, great. So we got that. We got Drew McIntyre squashing Ricochet and Ali. Lovely. Um, was that Raw? I think that's about it. That's, wow. Um, okay, I guess now I'm 17 minutes into this rant, I'll address the positives. That... One thing I really did enjoy on this show is Drew McIntyre backstage in the locker room. That was funny. That was... If you didn't like that, I don't know. Like, th that was a funny segment. Legit. What they did, Drew McIntyre walked backstage. Okay, he stormed backstage because Lashley has that bounty on him. He, he storms into the locker room. He's just yelling at everyone. And it was funny. He, he yells at some random saying, oh, you're going to reach in your phone, grab your, you know, you know, reach in your bag, grab your phone, start a hashtag, get a trend going. Because that's the only way you actually, you know, get anything nowadays, is it? You know, start a trend. You know, complain about it. Like, just mocking the whole main event Banks vs. Blair thing. That was funny. He yelled at Braun Strowman, being like, you should be a five-time world champion and said you're a joke. That was good. He, you know, yelled at Matt Riddle. That was great. Ricochet stood up to him. It was okay. That whole segment was good. I, I wish he made some comment about guns and knives. and Because the fact of the matter is, Drew McIntyre stepping into the backstage locker room in WWE... I didn't see any guns, I didn't see any knives, therefore locker room equals soft power, so that was that. And really, and the stuff with, yeah, the stuff with The Fiend, Alexa Bliss, that was fine. And Randy Orton did some promo where he literally said The Fiend about a hundred times. So if you want to play a drinking game with when he, every time Randy Orton says The Fiend, take a shot, you'll be in hospital in 30 minutes. So that was Raw. That was the March 29th, 2021 episode of Monday Night Raw. I have a throbbing headache. Hopefully you've enjoyed this rant because... My God, I needed to do something about this Raw. This Raw was one of the worst pieces of television I've ever seen. After WrestleMania, trust me, I, I will not be doing any more Raw content because, my God, I can see why I didn't cover this show for legitimately, like, three months. Yeah, this this was not it. This was not it, Chiefs. Yeah, enjoy the video. Like, comment, sub, all that kind of stuff. You guys know the drill. See ya.